St. Joseph, guardian of the Redeemer, pray for us. Hello, brothers and sisters from Risen Christ Catholic Parish. This again is Father Eric in my third and final video on St. Joseph during this year in honor of St. Joseph. And I'd like to reflect in this brief video on a uh, little known uh, work by St. John Paul II, his apostolic letter, Redemptoris Custos, or Guardian of the Redeemer. I prefer the looser translation, Caretaker of the Redeemer. And this is my favorite image of St. Joseph, which is on the cover of this particular book or copy of this letter from John Paul II, which will be available down below in the link. But in this image, you see how Joseph is carrying Jesus. He's oftentimes shown with his carpenter tools in his hand as a worker and his sleeves literally rolled up. But this is my favorite because it shows Joseph as a father. He's caring for the child. It's not someone he dismisses off to Mary to care for while he uh, works late, at, late and long hours. No, he's holding Jesus. He's loving Jesus. He's caressing Jesus with his cheek. And Christ is looking up to him like, teach me in my humanity what it is to be a man. Teach me in my humanity what it is to love God and pray to him and honor Mary and to live the commandments, which he did. And then in Joseph's left hand, you see this uh, lily flower. It's an image or symbol of his purity. He was married to the most beautiful, most holy woman that ever has lived or will live. And yet he was perfectly chaste, celibate, and loving. And this wonderful reflection on Guardian of the Redeemer by Pope St. John Paul II, he goes through uh, six or six chapters, uh, very brief. The first is a portrait of the gospel and their life in Nazareth growing up together with Jesus. The second is the guardian of the mystery of God in reference to St. Joseph, then a reference to him as the just man, chapter three, a husband, and then chapter four, work as an expression of love, and then five, primacy of the interior life, and finally chapter six, patron of the church in our day. I'd like to give a very brief reflection on each of them. First, we see in St. Joseph the gospel portrait. As a man, uh, he assumed his responsibilities as husband and father, in being married to Mary uh, long before she conceived. It was a formal process of the proper engagement and then when the family had enough money to give to the husband or to the husband's family as a dowry for their daughter, he can then take her into his home. And so there's usually an interim of working out those details after the marriage but before they lived together. And, and Joseph took her in, you know the story, there's no need to repeat it, but he was truly a father in every sense of the word, even though he didn't biologically bring Christ into the world. One of the most uh, powerful and moving parts of this document is when John Paul II talks about how Joseph, in naming Jesus at the temple, assumed a legal and religious responsibility over him. Of course, back then there were no DNA tests. Everyone knew who the mother was, but you had no way to be certain who the father was. And so by going to the temple at the circumcision and helping circumcise Jesus himself and naming Jesus, um, at, he was assuming the responsibility legally and religiously that this is my son, no less than any other man's son. And in doing so, he assumes the responsibilities as, as husband and father. And then this idea of guardian of the mystery of God. St. Joseph is a guardian of the mystery. As we start opening up churches again and allowing here in our parish, um, beginning today, a communion on the tongue, we're receiving Jesus in the Eucharist. Whether the tongue or the hand, both are permissible and moral and right and good ways to receive. Um, we're receiving this mystery, a gift entrusted to us to guard, protect, to love, to care for. Yeah, what is most important is the disposition and how we receive more than, um, than how we receive literally by our hands or on the tongue. Because if our hearts are closed and not disposed to the grace, so much is lost. Can we, every time we receive communion, every time we hear the word of God proclaimed, recognize that we, are, we have been entrusted with this great responsibility to be guardians of the mystery of God, his word made flesh, his word proclaimed in sacred scripture. You and I are guardians. Every time we hear the word of God proclaimed in scripture, every time we received most especially the most holy Eucharist, can we guard and love and protect him in that gift as we receive him and love him including going on beyond Mass to one another. And then he was described as a just man, as a husband, responsible, faithful, uh, responsive to God's call. Um, Pope St. John Paul II says that Joseph's fatherhood comes to pass through marriage to Mary, that is, through the family. He develops this idea of husband 
and guardian of the Redeemer in the context of the family where his fatherhood can flourish. And so it's through his marriage to Mary that his fatherhood blossoms. And it says, he goes on to say in paragraph 8, his fatherhood is expressed concretely in his having made his life a service, a sacrifice to the mystery of the incarnation and to the redemptive mission connected with it. In having used the legal authority which was his over the Holy Family in order to make a total gift of self, of his life and his work, in having turned his human vocation to domestic love into a superhuman oblation of self, an oblation of his heart and of all his abilities into love placed at the service of the Messiah growing up in his own house. So this idea of being a guardian of the mystery means a total self-giving to Jesus in the service of the home, in the service of our families. We're all called to be Joseph in the home. When men and women uh, the same, and the children as well, to be guardians and caretakers of that domestic church that is our home and to assume that responsibility of total self-giving love out of love for God toward our family, mothers, parents, children, grandparents, whomever we live with. Uh, John Paul II goes on to talk about paragraph uh, section four, um, Joseph as a work of an expression of love, seeing not only the physical work we do as an act of love toward those in the family, but ultimately an act of love toward God. Can we see that in sweeping the floor, cooking meals, it's a real act of love. I know for so many women growing up, for me especially, cooking food, and many men now today as well, cooking food is an act of love. We're making something beautiful and tasteful and healthy and nutritious, and it's giving literally life to those who receive it. Um, it's a direct way of doing that, but there's many other indirect ways of expressing love through work, like emptying the garbage, sweeping the floor, our Saturday chores, uh, raking leaves, trimming trees, bushes, watering the lawn, getting ready for this change of season. Can we see, following the example of St. Joseph, all the work we do at home as a labor of love. And ultimately, John Paul II leads us to the most important work of all, and that is the work of the interior life, life of prayer, of reflection, expressed in the love of God. And he really highlights a Joseph's responsibility in that regard. Finally, he's patron of the church in our day, both when this was written by Pope John Paul II in, I believe, 1989, this apostolic exhortation, uh, as well as today. Certainly, Pope Francis has made St. Joseph prominent in our church by adding him to the Eucharistic prayer at every Mass that's being celebrated, celebrating this year in his honor, among many other things. As we uh, continue in this year of St. Joseph, consider reading this beautiful apostolic exhortation, deeply enriched by the theology of the body of John Paul II, this idea of self-giving, self-donation, self-governance, uh, self-sacrifice as an act of love that is uh, prominent in the theology of John Paul II, you'll see it here, distinct from Pope Francis's briefer and very simple and beautiful um, apostolic letter. Um, take time, pray over this this year, read over it. I'll have some links down below if I can find some good videos or movies on the life of St. Joseph as well. And I pray you enjoy it, seek his intercession, but above all, follow his example. Again, St. Joseph, guardian of the Redeemer, caretaker of the Redeemer, pray for us. May you be worthy guardians and caretakers of Jesus as you receive him every day in sacred scripture and in the most blessed sacrament of the altar. God bless you.